Hey guys, today we're taking a look at a SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z figure. We have got the new reissue of Vegeta here. So Vegeta is one of the original uh, SH Figure Arts in the Dragon Ball Z line. The original release fetches a hefty price on the aftermarket. I didn't get into these until not too long after he became unobtainable because I'm not spending $200 on this figure. So I'm glad they finally released him. He is in our standard box here, nothing too special. We got our figure with the window. We got some product shots all around the box. So if you've ever gotten one of these, you know what to expect. So let's crack him out. All right, so here is the Prince of All Saiyans out of his box. This isn't how he comes in the box. He comes with his arms crossed. I figured I would put the normal arms on him because otherwise, how am I going to do articulation? And we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to go into all the other stuff and talk about all the accessories and, and everything that he comes with. So this is clearly the original interpretation of Vegeta with the classic style Saiyan armor uh, from just the Saiyan saga where he first meets Goku and all the Z fighters. So he's still, you know, not a Super Saiyan, which is why we get him just with the black hair and why he's got a scouter as well. So as far as articulation goes, uh, he's got kind of the normal stuff for a DBZ figure arts at this point. The head can swivel all the way around. It's, you know, can jut forward and backward. It's got plenty of movement at the head. The neck is also articulated, so the neck will move and kind of come and go with the head to help its range of motion. The armor on the shoulders is articulated so you can move the arms up without getting hindered by the... Uh, by the shoulders so they don't exactly hit it they sit right there and then you can rotate them if you if you wanted to and then see the armor moves with it there is a bicep swivel because these arms um they just peg on so they peg in at the the bottom of the shoulder or the top of the bicep however you want to describe it and they can swivel all the way around i'm still having a little trouble getting mine to stick correctly i think it's just because it's brand new i need to play with that uh, peg a little bit there is a double joint at the elbow it's Pretty decent it's more than 90 degrees it's kind of ugly a little bit not not too great but it's it's functional and then we've got rotation on a ball peg and go all around with the wrist he's got an upper diaphragm joint so he can swivel around a bit bob up and down but if you go too far back you're going to start seeing some some gappage in there so watch that and then he can swivel at the waist here are those nice new creaky joints the legs can go out about yay far. They kick forward a little bit. The, the armor plates are going to get in the way on these kicks. They're just going to start to hit that joint. It's not too big a deal. I haven't run into any issues with it, really, in terms of you know causing me any, any harm. They can kick back quite a bit. A lot of rotation and movement at the thigh. We have got a... There is no drop-down joint here, just to point out. That's sometimes something we get with a figure art. He doesn't have that. We have got double joints at the knee, so they go all the way back. There is nothing at the boot, but that's not too uncommon. And then the ankle can go all the way around, rocker, side to side, the whole shebang. And then he's got uh, toe articulation as well. So pretty normal for a DBZ figure arts. I don't think we're missing anything. He's not got anything uh, exceptionally extra than any other figure, which is fine. As far as the sculpt goes, I think he looks pretty damn good. I am overall happy with how he looks. The hair looks really nice. They get that done pretty well. I've never really had too many problems with how the hair looks. He does have, uh, out of the box, he does have the tail pegged in. So this guy just pegs in uh, right in the butt. And then he uh, the tail wraps around and it will peg into itself. I've popped it out because uh, of how much I was moving him. All of the armor pieces, like I said, are hinged, sculpted really well, nice and tight. They move well with the figure. The musculature on the figure is sculpted really well. The head sculpt, I think, is really nice in addition to the hair in general. I think it looks very much like uh, a cartoon-accurate Vegeta. The Saiyan armor is sculpted really well. I'm a big fan of this design, so I'm happy with how it turned out. As far as paint goes, that's kind of the pain point for a lot of folks lately with Dragon Ball Z figures. Uh, I, I, get what, I get where people are coming with this, but there's not a lot of... Uh, shading on these figures. So he's basically just sort of cast in whatever color they cast him in, and then they go on about their business. Obviously, there is some paint on this guy. Uh, he does have whites and tans, but for the most part, there could be shading all through the muscles on the uh, on the undersuit in the armor, and the original figure has it. Uh, hell, the, uh, the new Dragon Stars figures are even shaded, honestly, maybe a little too much, I think. 
uh, but there's not really any line work or shading to bring out the sculpt, which I find very odd. It does seem weird. Um, it doesn't really bother me too much. It is something that I keep seeing, and it's, it's a weird thing, especially when you flip up this armor piece, because he is shaded right around there, and this is what people are calling it, like the pee pants syndrome. So a lot of new DBZ figure arts have like just this dark splotch around the crotch on the front where they have pissed themselves, basically. It's, it's odd. Of all the places to put shading, that is not it. You know, put it somewhere else, but I digress. So not tons of paint. Where it is painted, it's pretty clean, but there's not a whole lot to talk about. He does have uh, the scouter on right now, and it's painted pretty decently. It's got the little readout on the, uh, on the screen there, and then there is some whites and some grays. And overall, it's painted pretty well. It's sculpted nice, too. It just sort of pegs into the ear uh, on this particular head. So let's move on from this and take a look at all the stuff that he comes with now. So being a figure arts figure, he obviously comes with a lot more accessories than your average $20 figure. He's not $20. Uh, right now, we've got him with a few different things. So he's got the scouter on. He's got the extra arms, although... I would, just, I would say the crossed arms are the extra ones. That's just how he comes packaged. So this is kind of a default look for Vegeta. He does come with the uh, the tail piece, and this is how he comes in the box. Like I said, it pegs into the butt, and then it also pegs into itself to complete the wraparound look. But he does come with the uh, unwrapped tail, and it's just sort of... You pop this one out, and you can peg the other one in its place. Uh, as far as other replacement items that he has, he does come with an extra scouter, so you can pop the one that he has off now, the one with the readout, and put a different one on that does not have any readouts on it at all. So you can kind of have your choice on that one. He comes with two heads, two full heads, I should say, and he comes with four total faces. So in this configuration here, he comes with the scouter head because the scouter, like I said, pops on, and there is an extra little uh, slot there to put the scouter into the head. So it does, it's not a part of the head, it's extra, which is why you can swap it out. But this required an extra head to be included. So this is the default head that he comes with in the box. Uh, he has just kind of the stoic default expression. And then he has another head that has a smirk. And then he has another face that has him gritting his teeth. And then he has a face where he's yelling. The extra head is for, an, a, is for one where you don't use the scouter. So it doesn't have that little notch to put uh, the scouter in place. He has three sets of hands and one extra. So we've got two closed-fisted hands, we have got two kind of open flared energy effect style hands, and then we've got two more closed yet still open gripping style hands, and then he has the extra hand with the uh, crushed scouter in the hand as well. And then again, like I mentioned before, he comes with the crossed arms piece, so you pop these two arms out, and then you can put the, the, the cross piece in, and he's standing there with his arms crossed instead of being posed any other way. All things considered, I do like this figure. Like I said before, I don't have the original one, so this one is one I've wanted for a while. So it's it's something that I've needed to kind of complete my Vegeta set right now. And maybe that's why I like it a little more than some other folks who have, you know, who maybe have the older releases and just think that the lack of paint on this figure is making it worse than it actually is. Uh, it has a lot of posability, a lot of extras. The only thing that really would have helped it is if maybe it had an energy effect. That's one thing that I really hate with current Dragon Ball Z figures, for the most part, because some still have them, is that they don't include energy blasts. That is like the telltale characteristic of, DB of DBZ. They shoot energy blasts non-stop in the show. Give me one. I would love to have like a Gallic Gun beam or something like that. Anything, really just to add a little more flair to this guy. But I am happy with what I got, and I do love the figure. I love Vegeta, so I was bound to like this figure anyway. So that's going to do it for this look at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Vegeta figure from Bandai. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, or not, that whole thing, whatever you want to do. And until next time.